We've got a short presentation, I'll say short, maybe 20 minutes. Um, and then we'd like to, we've got several breakout stations back along that back row where we'd like to hear a little bit more input from you specifically. Uh, some ideas, what you like, what you don't like, what you'd like to see, things like that. Um, so first of all, thank you for coming out. Um, good crowd, and we're very appreciative. Uh, and we hope this is as productive as the first meeting we had, uh, which was down at the Holiday Inn uh, a couple months ago. Um, from that, and talking with a, a group of folks that represent the farmer's market, uh, Jennifer, Parks and Rec, um, we have generated some concept plans for everyone to take a look at tonight uh, and give us your thoughts and your feedback. Uh, you'll see that uh, come through the show. Uh, you'll see kind of two-dimensional or the surface, what it looks like, and then we've actually got some canopies um, to talk about as well. Um, so enjoy the, the presentation. After the presentation, we're going to go to the breakout tables. There'll be people there to take down your comments, answer your questions, whatever it might be. And then along the way, if you want to get up and, and grab a snack, please do. Um, we have some, some good snacks back there uh, as well. My name is Ron Reeks. I'm with the uh, firm of Wendell. Dean Gowan is our landscape architect, and Gina Strike is our architect. So I'm going to turn it over to them and let them do the show. Uh, and then afterwards, we look forward to uh, talking with you further. So, Dean. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Um, we're going to show, as Ron said, a, a number of quick options, generate some discussion. You, we can go over and take a closer look at the boards. But we want to first kind of get into what we'll call the master plan, which is like the ground plane, the, the site plan aspect of this. Um, locationally, uh, this space outside in the market already serves as kind of a downtown plaza, downtown park the you know heart of downtown we want to make it better we want to make it uh, even more lively more uh, dynamic than it is today um, what this map represents obviously the market in relationship to this portion of downtown the blue areas are uh, pu both public parking area that exists now and there's some private lots that you can't see that are all colored in and then the blue striping represents on-street parking. So there's a significant amount of parking around. It's just not always situated where we all want it. Um, existing site, you guys all know it. You can look outside and see it. Uh, basically, uh, to be nice, it's a, it's a big parking lot with a farmer's market in the middle of it. And we want to make it more than that. We want to make this area, uh, it, although it could function as a parking lot, not necessarily look like a parking lot. We have an amphitheater-like element on the site that really doesn't function as an amphitheater. It's largely a set of steps. So we want to start to address things and take opportunity, take an opportunity to, to take advantage of the grade changes and things. We have the Dolphin Fountain, we have a corner out here, which is you know, fairly significant and visible corner that's not the entry point to the site. So those are all the types of things that we're starting to look at. The existing site, um, obviously we're in the indoor market, the, the armory building, the canopies. We'd like to say they're kind of introverted. They, they, uh, you really got to kind of come in off the street to know, know what uh, what this is all about and we want to take a look at, at bringing this out to the street making this a, a much grander presence within the downtown area uh, just orient you Main Street 12th visitor center church just to kind of get your bearing straight we did an interesting analysis and this is kind of all the slopes obviously Lynchburg's built built on the side of a hill um, the dark red orange colors represent where the where the significant slopes are so we want to take advantage of that and uh, do all we can to kind of work with the grades and not against the grades in the research process and in the site visits and and looking at at the area the general context you know we kind of put together these diagrams of uh, 
of things that we either want to have happen or there are issues, opportunities. Uh, the corner, right now it doesn't function as a, as a significant point on the site. You have your sign there. That as a gateway is, is important. Gateway down on the other corner, people may be parking down the, the hill in the public lot. Uh, make, taking a greater advantage of the center of the site. Taking advantage of the slope, possibly doing an amphitheater. Uh, the visitor center is important. I know we're going to meet with the visitor center, but the, uh, that's an important element in downtown Lynchburg, and it sits there. We want to make their, uh, have a better interface with, with that and the market itself. And of course, the indoor market. We can't forget that that's why you know, all of this, everything we do outside, we want to enhance the inside and, you know, functionally. So all of our sketching and, and idea generating uh, kind of came to a concept plan, a concept master plan, which you'll be able to see up close um, more, in more detail after. But just uh, some high level organization uh, here. We can, I'll talk to you in, in a minute, but you know, where the amphitheater, how this thing flows. To get to this point, and Gina, jump in here, we looked at um, a lot of the, the input that we've heard along the way. The last time we talked with you guys, uh, we had heard a lot about how people wanted an improved connection between the exterior market and the interior market. People were looking for more activities for places that children could play outside. We wanted, they were looking at improved lighting and um, movable tables and furniture, more places to sit outside if you come inside and it's a nice day and bought food, so you could have a place outside to enjoy the city since we are downtown. Right, there's a lot of aspects of, of what we've heard that we've tried to translate into the master plan. And you know, starting with some of the uh, gateway locations, we don't just want one spot for people to walk in, or even two. We want multiple spots. We want this to be a, a grand uh, plaza that that uh, welcomes people from all angles. And that's kind of how we got at this radial scheme. We we just kept putting these points on the map, and everything kind of led to a center point. And obviously, we want to link to the interior of the building. The uh, entrances to the building here itself, the interior market, are incredibly important in how we link the outside to the inside. How we look at the flow of people, um, you know, again, kind of bringing everyone in and getting them into the market and linking all these points is really important to the success of this, this place in the long run. Um, the, the farmer's market itself, obviously that's, that's the, the the main objective here is, is we have a successful market now, we want to make it better, we want to make it function better, and obviously we want to update it. But the market now, uh, as we see it on the master plan, would be pulled out closer to the street, um, giving a, a little bit nicer urban presence, and letting people driving by know what it is, know, you know, announcing itself. On busy days, and the market has certain days throughout the year that are, you know, the, the busiest days. What we show, and I'll talk in a second about, you know, some, some interior uh, plaza parking spaces. Possibly the cars are cordoned off and the whole site becomes the market. So these, this could be a more formal canopy, which Gina will talk about. These could be temporary tents that get set up on the nice, um, the busiest days. And all of that translates to the whole area here being a farmer's market, being a community market, being, being kind of the center, epicenter of the area. How people would flow, how people would come through the vendor booths, keep going, come through more, get into the market, flow through. So all of this is really important to us. Parking alone, we've as, as we've said along the way, something's got to give. Uh, right now it's a parking lot out there in order to bring other uh, elements, features, um, uses, something's got to give. We have reduced the amount of parking on the site, but we have some necessary parking that I would say for much of the year off season, 
This functions as a parking lot, but again, it doesn't look like a parking lot. We might do some special pavement. Uh, we're looking and hopefully meeting with the, the streetscape team that's working along the streets here soon to discuss the on-street parking that doesn't necessarily exist now out here and reconfiguring the streets as they're doing. Um, we've heard loud and clear from the farmers themselves that the access of goods and products and stuff to their vendor booths is incredibly important. Now we're dealing with the issue of you know, offloading, moving your truck versus offloading, leaving your truck. Those are all things we're, we're trying to work out now. But there would be areas on this scheme where trucks would be able to get up close to the booths. In some cases, we wouldn't want the trucks parked there nonstop, but in other cases we can. Uh, bus stop, we have the public transportation. So there's a lot, as you can see, there's a lot of overlap going on and there's a lot of things happening. To take advantage of the slope, there's a grade change up in this area to this lower corner of about 20 to 22 feet. That's pretty significant. And a lot of it happens, as you saw on that map earlier, in this area where you have now uh, basically a set of steps with some terraces, um, turning that into a legitimate amphitheater, an outdoor amphitheater, that could take on more of a, an appearance like this, where you have the you're all sitting on a, a seat which is about 18 inches off the ground. You know, there's some comfort level to, to how we, we function. And these would be, you know, terraces that on our plan would function as an amphitheater. But oh, by the way, you know, you could also grab your lunch inside here and go out and eat and sit. And there's a lot of things that, that this could this could bring a whole new element to the market that doesn't exist today. Uh, in addition to the amphitheater, we see the, the center of this becoming a public plaza. Now this shows something that would be basically on a daily basis. This is always there. This is the, the main area that everyone would kind of gather and that's, that's the so-called public plaza. But on certain days of the year when cars are almost seen as a danger in some cases to be on the site, because this is not a big site, uh, the whole area becomes a plaza, a public plaza. And oh, by the way, the market doesn't run all the time. You know, by one, two o'clock in the afternoon some days, the, the, the vendors move out and we want to see the whole site become kind of a public plaza. There could be events, there could be uh, a, a bigger seasonality to this all year round. There could be winter festivals, Christmas festivals, Halloween festivals. There's a lot of things that could happen that that in some cases happen now but this would allow it to uh, become a, a grander setting. Also we've heard along the way children's uh, activities for children, places for children to, to uh, hang out. Uh, don't know if this is exactly where it'll end up because we, we're probably going to tweak some things, but having an area which we've talked about could be a splash pad in the summer, could be a play structure, could be uh, some play equipment for the kids, but it could also be a place in the winter for, you know, around Christmas for the Christmas tree to be set up or, you know, a, a big focal area. So that, that also is important. In the area, the times when this is not necessarily a parking lot, there could be pavement lines, um, games on the pavement. There could be a number of things that they are flexible and, and um, are more conducive to, to a, a wider range of of the public. Also, the whole site as kind of a, call it like a sculpture garden or an art setting or a cultural setting, these could be places for public art, for features, for uh, different focal elements on the site that would also draw people in to, to take a look at. Um, we could take vegetables literally we could have a bus shelter that's a uh, strawberry. Um, 
We have a lot of love in Lynchburg. Philadelphia has love. There's a lot of things going on. There's your water bearer statue. Uh, murals on walls. We're going to work with the visitor center and they're, they're you know, going to take a look at a mural on their back facade. One popular element around the country now are art walls where people can go up and write notes. It's almost like a big chalkboard. Like in Charlottesville. Right. So there's a lot of things or we could be you know more formal. This is a veterans memorial on the corner. So there's a lot of things that we hope to get some input on along the way. Um, other elements of the site, you have some fabulous chairs inside this market in the upper left. Um, why not bring them out to the site and, and start a theme? Um, bike racks, talked about fire pits, but there's code issues with those. Rocking chairs, um, Charlotte Airport, everyone loves to just sit in the rocking chairs. Um, they're you're popping up in public plazas all over the country. Shays lounges are popping up as a thing. Chess sets on the ground, uh, water play, transforming the whole thing into a Christmas market um, or a seasonal market. Food trucks. So there's a lot of overlapping elements here that, that are uh, something that we're, we're considering for the site. And some things that are not really, we haven't gotten too far into, but we will be addressing, you know, we've got donor bricks out here that need to be considered in this move. We've got a dolphin fountain. Now, whether that becomes the new focal piece or goes elsewhere, we don't know yet. Uh, the subsurface parking, we've got a parking area underneath the parking lot out here now. Uh, the latest, the, the thinking is that that becomes, that's filled in and uh, there's a lot of issues with it. Green infrastructure. Lynchburg's on the side of a hill. We get rain. Rain runs downhill. We have to deal with water. Uh, community gardens. We've heard that a lot in previous meetings. Uh, there's a debate in terms of how big a community garden needs to be to be successful and would it be successful and so we're, we're looking at those issues. We don't have a lot of space out here. We're already overlapping a lot of things on top of each other. But if we could do it even in terms of a, a smaller educational type garden, I think we'd consider that. Interface with the visitor center. And then the streetscape project. You know, there's a whole, whole project going on that will hopefully transform some of these streets uh, and, and look at traffic and look at parking. So I'm going to turn it over to Gina and she'll go through a lot of the canopy options. So Dean's talked a lot about the improvements to the ground plane, but we're also talking about what this could look like in a three-dimensional aspect because the canopy design would be one that would really help to advertise the market and to bring people to the site because they want to come and check it out. So we met with the stakeholder group and we had a design shred where we responded to a bunch of inspiration images and there were a couple key things that came out of that design shred. One important one was the feeling of a grand hall when you were underneath the canopy to make sure that it really had a sense of place. It wasn't something that was transient that you just kind of passed through. And so we also we talked about making it a place that people want to be and to make sure that it had a lot of natural light and that it was well lit and that it had color and that it was exciting. So we went through and developed a whole bunch of sketches and we refined it down to two options. And it's really important to remember that these are all very early sketches and the computer can make it look really finished, but these are all at maybe 2% design that we have a lot of refinement to work on, but we're excited to have this meeting because after we go through the presentation, we'll get to hear your feedback and get your opinions on what it could be. But when we were looking at our canopy options, we were looking at the history of Lynchburg, and then we were looking at where Lynchburg wants to move in the future and how we can look at materiality and how we can bring those two things together to celebrate Lynchburg's past, but also look towards its future. So option one is, this is kind of an aerial view from it, and Main Street is along here, and we are in the market building here. And
and the master plan that Dean showed you has that curve really bringing the market presence to the corner so that we are building up the streetscape so that as you continue along Main Street, you don't have a parking lot feel. You have a structure that really engages the public and engages the people as they walk down the street. So this is a two-level canopy. The first level here is a polycarbonate translucent material that works more towards the future of what we're talking about for Lynchburg. It's a more modern material. And then the top canopy is more of a traditional standing seam roof. And you can see in the next image that the offset between the two canopies allows light and air to come up through. So this is a view under the canopy. So during the summer, when the market is in session and it's hot, heat rises and will come out of the canopy in the translucent portion the translucency of it is not transparent, it's not clear. So it allows a lot of light to come in, but it blocks the heat, which makes the market space really bright, but not excessively warm. We've also looked at the overlap between the two canopies, so that the way the bottom canopy slopes down and the top canopy slopes back, you're not gonna get as much rain in it because the overhang on the top canopy would prevent any rain that was coming in to hit the bottom canopy and roll down because the open market canopy that you have now, it really is not too rain friendly. People can get wet and it kind of discourages people from shopping on rainy days. So we want to make sure that we address those issues. And the translucent canopy is on the north side, which also helps cut down on the heat gain. We also were talking back to that criteria about color. Color is exciting, color draws people in. We are kind of using this top canopy that reaches out to the corner to, as an opportunity for some kind of branding or some kind of incorporation of color. The translucent canopy also gives you an opportunity for color with light, especially at night. You could have colored LEDs incorporated into the translucent canopy so that the whole structure can glow. And you can change that color based on the time of year. If, like if it's Christmas, you could do red and green, things like that. So we're also talking about developing corner signage to draw people in with information about the market because the Lynchburg Farmers Market is one of the longest running markets in the country, which is something really to celebrate and to represent some of its history. This is a view coming up from Main Street. So as Dean mentioned, we have significant grade changes. And so as you are coming up Main Street, you can enter into the site here and as our secondary entrance, which brings you along the access point, highlighting the fountain through the canopy. So our second canopy design looks at the history of Lynchburg and the future of Lynchburg in a slightly different way. It's a single canopy structure for this portion of the market where you would sell, but any kind of circulation path is another canopy, and that is a more modern interpretation of which has kind of an off angle here and it kind of changes angle as it goes back towards the market. Both canopy options have the main canopy where the market is, and then a secondary canopy, which provides a covered pathway from the outdoor market into the in indoor market. Because we want to continue to encourage people to come to the interior market, so that there are many wonderful things to be had inside, and we want to make sure that we take advantage of the crowds that they get to experience the whole community market together. And then this option uses bent blue lamp structures here. And then because we are up higher on the outside, we have an opportunity to incorporate colored glass panels on the outside to help block down any kind of rain or wind or things like that. But it offers an opportunity for branding. It's a little bit different than what we saw in the other option where the polycarbonate canopy offers branding with light and with the larger main canopy. This one, the opportunity for branding is a little bit lower and along the whole market. And this is a view of the second option from Main Street that we had just saw for the other canopy. You can see that any circulation canopy here is a different form than this one. So we also want to make sure that in we're talking about pretty pictures for landscape. We're talking about pretty pictures of canopy ideas, but we also want to talk a little bit about how the market would be used. 
So we know that loading from trucks is an important part of the exterior market and it is actually part of, we made sure that we maintain loading for the interior market as well because that is an important consideration. So this image shows the idea of how trucks would come into the site through here. So that this could be a pedestrian path or plaza when it's not in session. When the market's in session, we have the trucks here. And we started to talk a little bit about possible selling configurations for vendors while they're in the space. Because one thing that we heard in some of the public meetings was that having one table outside limits your options for selling. So we were talking about different kinds of flows through the market. And then this is the same plaza that we just saw with the trucks with an idea of tables and chairs when the market's not in session. So a lot of things that Dean talked about were everything having multi-use. Because this is a small site, we wanna make sure we take advantage to get the most out of what we're doing. So, and so um, again, we wanna hear from you. We've got uh, some booths set up. We'll be back there to take your comments, questions, things like, of that nature. We've done some uh, advancement of what we heard from the first stakeholders meeting and the public meeting. We heard this afternoon from the stakeholders again. Uh, so we needed to hear from you again. Uh, our goal is to take one of these concepts to the next step, which is actually begin to draw some plans. So we are at that stage. Uh, so with that, please. We also want to thank uh, Petra and Steve Hackman from Lorraine Bakery for the yep. treats and Tom Heyman from Grain to Sense for the coffee. So we really appreciate it. And um, it kind of adds a great atmosphere okay. to the market. We'll see you back at the booth. Thank you.